If you got your Bibles, come, wave them at me if you got one. Wave up. Amen. If you don't have a Bible, go to your cell phone, not to social media, but to the Word of God. And, and you say, I don't have a Bible app. Uh, what is that one we got? The bl- go download that blue letter letter blue blue letter Bible. Blue, blue letter Bible. I've got it on my app. I can't st- pronounce it, but I have it. It's an awesome app. It really is. It's my favorite Bible app, and uh, it's got a lot of commentaries on it and good reading if you like that. But go with me tonight. I got something on my mind that I want to share tonight in First Thessalonians chapter number one. I'm going to read all 10 verses. Got something on my heart. We're living in troublesome times, don't we? Um, If you watch that debate, you're about as depressed as I am today. Um, I went to bed. I don't know if that's why my jaw's messed up and I was gripping my teeth or something during the night. I was about half mad all night long. And uh, I want you all to know something. Our hope is not in this country. It isn't. We're so divided. and Our hope's not in this country. Uh, I don't know who's going to be elected. When election night comes, I'm going to take a baby aspirin and go to bed. And uh, I know who I'm going to vote for. I may even hold my nose when I do it. Because I don't have much confidence in them. I don't have much confidence in government at all. But I tell you, I can't do much about government. Somebody help me. I can't. But God has put me somewhere that I think we need to dwell more about it than we do our politics. Come on. I've just about heard enough politics for a lifetime. But I'm going to deal with something tonight. When I was a young preacher, 22 years old, when I first got started, I didn't know where I was going to go in life. Uh, I got saved in, at uh, Pinch Baptist Church. That was my home church. I, in six months, was uh, candidating at Leatherwood Baptist Church. That's way out in the country. Somebody told me, you cannot build a church there. That's what I was told. Uh, You can't build a church there. When I went there, there was 19 people. I went a year, Brother Ray, and uh, it got 19, went to 18. One of them died. I was a little discouraged, but we had revival a year in my ministry there. And it was miraculous. If you go out there today, you would say, I don't know how a church could ever exist in a place like that. And I went to that church as a young 22-year-old. We had revival. My dad was saved. 43 other people were saved. That church in two weeks went from 18 to 108. When I left, they had 118. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't, under, I don't know if you realize, uh, realize what I'm trying to say. It was just a miracle what God done. And uh, I, a lot of you don't know my background, but I pastored three bivocational churches before I came here. But I always dreamed about pastoring a church that made a difference. I always dreamed of that. Um, and I, I, I want you all to know this about your preacher. I, I want to do it right. I've always dreamed about doing it right. And doing it right is not necessarily my philosophy or some other man's philosophy. But if we're going to get this thing about church right, we got to do what the Bible says and be a Bible church. Somebody say, help me preach. And what I'm going to preach tonight, I want, and by the way, we're getting a lot of new people here. And you new people, you need to listen up. And some of you folks been here a while, you need to listen up. Because what I'm preaching on tonight, I'm going to be preaching on the model church. I'm not preaching on a perfect church because as long as we're in it, it's not perfect. 
but we can follow a biblical model and have a model church. And um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1, if I, and if you read the whole book of 1 Thessalonians, you'll realize that this was a model church. Now, I'm going to say something maybe you don't know. We have church in America tonight because of Paul's decision to plant this church and others in this city. Now, if you have a note, let me give you some background. This church, if you want to study where it was founded, it was founded in Acts chapter number 16. You remember, how many remember the Macedonian call? Raise your hand if you remember the Macedonian call. Some of you don't, so I'll tell you what it is. It's in Acts 16. Uh, Paul was heading east in the ministry. His mission work was toward the east. And they're in, the, in a vision at night. Paul saw a man who was waving at him in a vision, saying, come over here. Some of you ought to get ready to shout. And what Paul done, instead of going east, he turned west. And because he turned west and went into Macedonia and Philippi and preached the gospel in those cities of Macedonia, he eventually migrated to Europe and then to England and then to America. That Macedonian, boy, I'm about to get happy. That Macedonian call and Paul being obedient to the call is the reason there is a Tays Valley Baptist Church tonight because Paul turned west and the gospel came to the west. Well, glory. And well, hallelujah. And because of religious freedom, they left England to come to America. And by the way, we ought to thank God we got religious freedom tonight. And whether you like Donald Trump or not, maybe sometimes he's a little edgy, he can rub you. He makes me nervous about half the time. But I will tell you, he's been the most friendly president to churches in the last 30 years. And I'm praying that God, I'm just praying he gets in. Because I, I am afraid of what's going to happen. But I want to tell you what, I don't, this country is shaky. But I can't do much about this country. But I can do something about Taze Valley Baptist Church. And my goal is that it'll be a model church that people want to swarm in here and be a part of it. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. I know that we're kind of, you know, it's hard to get a big crowd right now. We're doing real well. But I want you to know we're getting a lot of people coming in. And when everybody gets over their fear factor, this ain't going to get real. And it's going to be filled up again. And we got to make sure that it stands exactly on the Word of God. And it becomes a model, not only for this county, but for this state and for this nation. And I want to preach tonight. Lord, have mercy. I'm starting to sense some preaching in my bones. I want to preach tonight on a model church. And I want to read 10 verses. And I want to give you five truths. Brother Chad, I'm just teaching and preaching tonight. I'll probably do a lot of preaching in a minute. But go over here with me to 1 Thessalonians 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. Paul and Silvanius and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father, and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice how he, what he says to this church. We give thanks to God always for you all. I think sometimes 
A lot of people in the church wonder how your pastor thinks about you and what I think about you. I want y'all to know, I thank God for Tate Valley Baptist Church, and I pray for y'all. Paul said we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. There's not a week goes by I don't pray for your family and pray for your needs. This morning I woke up 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Sister Judy called me. Glenda passed away. I was instrumental in helping Glenda get assurance of her faith and helped her along. And uh, she's in heaven now. And I'm glad that this church played a big part in her life. And you know God wants to play a big part in your life. Look at verse 3. Paul, he's commending him. Listen, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and your labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brother and beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. And in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were examples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of any end we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Whoa! <laughs> and I'm gonna, what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to preach these 10 verses to you, and I'm going to give you five truths about a model church and the kind of church I want this one to always be. Number one, in verse number one, I want this church to be a model church Because that church was a church that was an encouraging church. You know, I want people to come to this church. And we want to be the kind of church that when you come in and then you leave, you left encouraged. Amen. Amen. I don't like going to places where I'm not encouraged. Amen. If I was going to this church and wasn't being encouraged and it was a downer church, I'd find me another. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. There's so much discouragement in the world. Somebody help me preach. Somebody needs to find a place, a haven of rest, a church, a model church that you can find rest and joy and peace and encouragement because there's a lot of discouragement going on. Three things I'll say under that, and I'll cool quickly. First of all, we're encouraged by our brothers or your brothers in Christ. You know what we ought to be? They are, and I've always been known for this. I'm not this kind of guy that caters just to wealthy people. I think we ought to be ministered to everybody. Thank God for folks that have money. Thank God for folks that don't have money. That ought to be the criteria. The criteria is we ought to love one another. No no matter what our background is and how rich or how poor we are or what color you are, somebody help me preach. That ought not to even be a factor tonight. We ought to be brothers and sisters and love each other. Amen. Amen. 
And all these groups talking about all these different lives that matter. I, and I'm not getting in that political debate. I'm going to tell you every person, every life uh, uh, matters. And we ought to love each other. Hey, the, the, a church tonight ought to be a place where we find love and not hatred and not bitterness and not anger. We ought to find kindness. Not only are we encouraged, he said, by our, your brothers, but he's encouraged by your father. How many glad you got a heavenly father? You, you talked about it tonight. We can come boldly to our heavenly father. I got a father that loves me. I got a father that cares for me. I got a God. See, that's what we need. That's who we need to elevate tonight. We need to elevate God the father. He's on the throne, by the way. This country going psycho, but he's on the throne. Amen. This country has no direction, but he's on the throne. Uh, there's a lot of people acting like idiots, but he's on the throne. And he's your father. And him, well, glory. And we're one another's brother and sister. And that ought to mean something. And then we ought to be encouraged by your Savior. Amen. Well, Hallelujah. I want to tell you what, he saved you when you were hopeless. He saved you when you were helpless. He saved you when you ought to be in hell frying. But he looked beyond your faults and saw your need. He loved you and thanked God for you. And I want to tell you, I have a talk to my father and communion with my elder brother Jesus every day. And I get encouraged well, glory, by just the mention of his name. Spending some time in prayer with God this morning. I had a hectic day, busy day. I, but I found time early. I got here a little earlier. Found time to pray and read my Bible. And I'll tell you, I got in communion with the Holy Ghost. And I got communion with my Savior. And I got communion with my God. And I'm, I'm before you tonight, and I'm encouraged. Amen. I guess I'm encouraged because I ain't watched TV all day, hallelujah. Amen. And I haven't watched all any commentary on the debates. So I don't want to listen to it. And I, by, by the way, the media, and, and, and the media mob, I don't want to have nothing to do with them. And I haven't been watching much TV during this election time because it makes me sick. And I've just been trying to commune with God more. Somebody help me preach. And you'll find encouragement there. See, you ain't going to find encouragement out there, but you will find encouragement up there. Whew. Somebody help me preach. Amen. I had, I had a brother uh, today out of the blue. I wasn't expecting it. made me feel pretty good. He just said this. I am so glad you're my preacher. And I thought, well, I'm glad I am too. It encouraged me. Somebody help me. But number two, let me hurry because I've I got to get all this outlined down. Look at verses two through four. A model church, we should be an encouraged church. But number two, we ought to be an energetic church. See, if you know anything about your preacher, I'm 69 years old. And I may not get along like I used to, run, carry on like I used to, but I'm, an, I'm still at 69 years old, an energetic old man. I want y'all to know I am like the energetic bunny. I mean, I've got energy in me. I do. I do. I, I, I mean, I, I never thought I'd ever live to 69. 69 was old. Now I think it's kind of young. Amen. Now let's look at this energetic church. Stay with me. Look, look what the Bible says. Paul said, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. An energetic church is a church that is ceaseless in your prayer. How many believe prayer changes things? Right now I'm praying more than I've ever prayed before. Because I believe it makes a difference. 
See, an energetic church is a church that exercises its prayer life. Then number two, look at verse three, and I want you to see this. An energetic church is, is constructive in your faith. Look what it said, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. Now, let me explain something. Kim and I, we go around in circles about this thing, talk about this every once in a while. You know, I believe in every dispensation, people were saved by grace through faith. In the old, in the new, during the tribulation, and during the millennium. But now here's what I do believe. I believe your faith works. Don't tell me you got faith if you don't have no works with it. We're not saved by works, but faith produces works. Somebody help me preach. There's a lot of people who says they're Christians, but they don't have any works, and they don't have any fruit. I don't believe they're any more saved than my lawnmower is that I about turned over last week. Don't tell Marguerite. You hear me? I personally believe that faith works and faith without works is dead. When God saved us, he said, here's what he said, why this church was so energetic. They were a church of faith, but their faith was, was enabled by the works. Somebody help me preach. Don't tell me you got faith and you ain't got no works. Don't tell me you got faith and you're not doing anything for God. This church had works and they had faith that works. Boy, that's good preaching. Then he said in verse 3, be constant in love. Remember without ceasing your work of faith and your labor of love. By the way, i tell you what our motivation ought to be. We ought to be doing what we're doing because of love. Amen. Somebody help me preach. By the way, you won't want to miss church if you're doing it because you love God. You won't ever worry about tithing if you're doing it because you love God. You won't worry about doing your work in the church if you're doing it because you love God. Somebody help me. See, I want you to know something. The love of God makes a difference in somebody's life. Amen. When y'all, when y'all look at me, I want you to look at me and say, hey, that guy's not in it for the dime. He's not in it for the dollar. Thank God y'all pay me. Thank God I need it. But I've got to be honest with you. That's not my motivating factor. I believe every church member ought to be motivated by the love of God. And we ought to do what we do because of the love of God. And I believe you do. Amen. Good preaching, Reverend. Then verse 3, being confident in hope, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Let me tell you something. We got something this world don't have. That's hope. Hope. Check out America tonight. Not much hope. I got so aggravated last night. People was burning down our cities. And one of the presidential candidates said, uh, Antifa is an idea. Well, my God, they're burning cities down. Any idea, it's a movement. And I want to tell you, I'm against Antifa. I'm against the KKK, white supremacists. I'm against anything that's ungodly. And I will say it. Good preaching, Reverend. And then, fifthly, be certain in your election. See, God chose me. Amen. Let me show y'all something here. God chose us. Okay? But we also chose him. That's what you call sovereignty and responsibility. By the way, if you didn't choose him after he chose you, you're going to die and go to hell. And it's to make your election sure. 
Praise God, I know I'm one of God's children. I know I've been saved. I know I've been chosen. I know I'm one of his. I don't doubt it at all. You might be in this room and doubt your salvation. I don't doubt it at all. And by the way, if you got church members that doubt, that church will be weak if they got doubt in church members. By the way, I want you to know every church member here ought to believe in the assurance of the saints and believe in eternal security that you're safe forever and God don't cast you off, but God keeps you in his love. Lord, I feel some preach tonight. I'm supposed to be teaching, right? Look at verses five through seven. Number one, we should be an encouraged church. Number two, we ought to be an energetic church. Number three, and I like this, we ought to be an exemplary church. Look what he said in verse five through seven. For gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and the Holy Ghost and much assurance. As you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake, and you become followers of us and the Lord having received the word of much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were, listen to this, examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Amen. I'll tell you what, why they were exemplary. They proclaimed the right message. You know what this world needs? They need the right message. And believe this or not, the world is confused about the message of God. I want you to know God is, God's way to salvation is not works. It's not church membership. It's not baptism. It's not, it's not going to a priest and confess your sins. It's trusting a Savior and believing the gospel. I can tell you this. I've been your pastor for 42 years, and I've been preaching the right message. I'm not turning back. I still, I'm preaching the right message. I, I'm talking about Jesus crucified and buried and rose again. That's the right message. Hey, I'm not, pre, I'm not preaching a social gospel. That's not what we're preaching tonight. We're preaching a gospel that has power in it. Amen. 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 Good preaching, Reverend. Amen. To be a model church, you've got to preach the right message. Then verse 6, you got to pursue the right men. And you became followers of us and of the Lord. And having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you, are you the right kind of church person? Are you the right kind of church member? I'll be honest with you. I, I want to fill the church up, but I'd rather have 300 people that love God than 1,000 people that don't love God. Amen. I'm preaching. We need the right people. And by the way, they'll need be, never be the right people unless we pour ourselves in them and show them what is right. Good preacher, Reverend. In this world, hey, by the way, your children, your grandchildren, hey, they, they can't count on the government. They can't count on the world. They need to be able to count on a church that models after the New Testament and is doing everything it can to bring people to Christ. Let me give you a third thing here. Am I doing all right, Chad? And then it provides the right model. Look at verse 7. So that you were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and okay, I know sometimes, church, you think we're just a little body of believers in Hurricane, West Virginia, and not very many people know of us. You're really not right. This church, not because of me, but because of what God's done through it, is known all over this country. I don't know if y'all know that. Just this past Sunday, I had a text from North Carolina. A man called me and said he's praying and that he's looking up to us. 
a man in Louisiana, a man in Arkansas, a man in Texas, and a man in Wyoming spoke to me Sunday and thanked me for the outreach of the ministry. Thank God. There's a a hallelujah. I'm not boasting about it. I'm not bragging about it. I'm just telling you, I don't know if we realize the influence of this church in the nation. We need to be an exemplary church. I'm glad. I get calls every week. People call me up saying, uh, help me. Uh, give me some direction in the scripture to how to pastor the church. I got a problem I don't know how to handle. I had one the other day. I'll tell you about that. I got to hurry. I had one the other day. God called me up. Pastor called me up. I think it was, I don't know if it was Louisiana or, or Arkansas, one of the two. And he, he, he told me a big problem he had. He said, what you, he said, what would you do? <laughs> See, I'm not a faker. I said, I don't have a clue. <laughs> The only thing I know to tell you is trust God and, and, and just, just stay, stay with God and God will work it out. He told me one of the worst problems I ever heard in my life. I haven't even had it and I've had about everything. You know what? He called me back, Colton, and told me. He said, you know, I've done what you said. I just trusted God and I stood on the Bible And you know God worked the problem out. And I said, whoopee. Because I'm glad I didn't have to give him advice on it. Hello. Number four, let me, oh, I want to hurry. Boy, this is good, isn't it? Verse eight and nine. Y'all with me? Y'all follow me in the Bible? For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of end we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Two things I want you to know. A, a model church is an evangelistic church. Here's what I worry about. There's a lot of churches that are decent in their belief. I... I think they believe it pretty well. But I'll tell you where they're missing. They're not evangelistic. They're not trying to reach people. They're not trying to get people saved. You know the boy that you counseled on Monday, uh, you're doing the continue class with, the 72-year-old your old man that got saved here a few weeks ago. Man, he, he got saved. Man, he got the real deal. He come to me and he said, man, you are preaching, you are preaching, you are preaching. I started saying, I like you too. <laughs> but see, a real church is evangelistic church. And by the way, it, it, it requires proclamation. We need to tell everybody we can about Jesus. Amen. And evangelism results in other salvation. Now, I'm going to bring our point here real quick. I don't want to, I got to hurry. I'm going to preach this. It ain't preached much in churches, but I'm going to preach it tonight. How they turn to God from idols to serve the living true God. See, I still preach something that's not preached much. So let me tell you what it is. I preach repentance. Amen. Amen. I preach repentance. Amen. I, I don't preach this stuff that you sign a little card. I believe you need to repent. Yeah. They did. What is repentance? It's a changed mind. That brings a change of direction. They turn from their idols and serve the living God. That's what happened to me. I I got saved and I repented and I turned from my sin and I turned to God. That's repentance. That's not preaching much today. See, we got a lot of easy believism going on. Come on now. It's more than just sign a card. God's got to work in somebody's heart. And they got to trust Jesus and repent. Amen. I know it ain't preaching much to any. I know that. But I'm preaching it. Lastly, I want to encourage you with this, and I'm done. Verse number 10. A model church is an encouraging church, an energetic church, an exemplary church, evangelistic church, 
And verse 10 is an expected church. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. I want y'all to know something. Somebody I'll say whoopee. I think we're getting ready to get on the next bus. I know I ain't supposed to walk down here, but I'm going to anyway. Hold on, I better be legal. Boo. This world's in trouble, Danny. But here's the key. This world has no hope. But I'll tell you what we got. We're an expecting people. I'll be honest with you. I think he might come before election. Wouldn't that be good? I hope he comes election day when all of them's at the booth voting for the, uh, the whatever you call them people. By the way, I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I want all y'all to know that. I'm an independent. Independent Baptist, independent political. But I'm not looking at this world. I'm expecting something. How many of y'all believe like I do that it's 1159? I, I believe it's 1159, Roger. I believe we're just ready to get out of here. Amen. It ought to excite every one of you. Amen. See, a real church cult ought to be is one that's looking up, not just looking out. Amen. 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 Wouldn't it be good that the angel of the Lord right now, Lois, the angel of the Lord just blow that trumpet right now? Amen. Huh? That our change, wouldn't it be good? And then we hear the voice of God. Oh, yeah. I'm about to get excited. And God says, Come up in there. You said, How, well, How's that work anyway? I'm glad you asked. There is something in me that's connected to something in a pair. Yeah. And that something in me that's connected to a pair is the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when He takes the Holy Ghost out of here, uh, Brother Marion, I am going. I'm looking up. That's the best I could do on what a model church is. Will you try to be a model Christian? On a live stream right now, will you be a model Christian? And some of you really need to come back to church. Hey, we're in here. We all got masks on. We're, we're, we're doing Halloween every week. But we're having a good time. It's safe. Ain't nobody got no virus here. You have to get it at Kroger's or where you work before you get it here. Get back. Yeah. Wouldn't it be a good Sunday in this place full and the Lord just said, come up here now. A real church is a church that's looking up. Amen. Stand with me. I want to make sure everybody know you're saved. Raise your hand if you know you're saved. Raise them up high. Hold them up if you know you're saved. Let me see. God bless you. How many of you tonight just got some help in the message? Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. You pray for me. I'm going to pray. We'll sing a little song, then we're going to be dismissed. Father, thank you for this model church. Desperately, I want Tays Valley to be what I preached about tonight. And I want to be the kind of pastor that this church needs. A 24-7 pastor, a pastor that's here in the good times and the bad. And Lord, you're blessed now. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll sing a verse if somebody needs to pray. My hope is...